All right, many of you know that PyTorch is now Apple Silicon compatible. Yay, this is good news. That means if you go and install PyTorch and you choose the nightly preview build, Mac OS, Conda, or well, whatever environment you wanna do. But look at this, now it's not CPU only, it says default, which means you can run this command to install the PyTorch packages. And if you are on an Apple Silicon machine, it'll detect that and install the Apple Silicon version. Great, today I wanna to compare the performance of PyTorch on Apple Silicon. And I'm gonna do this on my M1 Max MacBook Pro and the M1 Ultra MacBook Studio right here. Both of them have 64 gigs of RAM. M1 Ultra has 20 cores, of course, and 64 core GPU. This one has only 10 cores and a 32 core GPU. Now, Sebastian Rashka created this benchmark test and has been collecting the information. I'll link to his blog post down below and you can follow the blog post, read it, it's pretty informative, and it gives you instructions on how to execute this yourself should you want to do that. And it links to his repository where he's collecting this information. So you can see all the up-to-date results of people running the benchmark marks so far. So if we go to the repository, there is the benchmarks folder in there and PyTorch M1 GPU. This has the Python scripts that you would run to get this going. And the one we are looking for is this one, Python for Apple M1. You could of course run the CPU tests. That's gonna take a while. And maybe don't give up your Nvidia cards yet. This shows you how to run the same code with the Nvidia GPU. And we're gonna take a look at the results at the end for that. And you probably shouldn't be surprised what you'll see. But let's get out with it. Here I'm gonna start things off on the M1 Ultra and I'm gonna run the VGG test. I'll explain what that is in a moment. But I'm gonna kick this off because it's gonna take a little while. I do need to specify the device here as MPS. That's the Apple Silicon device. You can also specify CPU or CUDA if you're running it on CPU or Nvidia GPU respectively. I've got MPS and let's go. Now, to explain what's happening here, I've got my friend Daniel from Down Under, who probably likes a little bit of Vegemite, to explain this. Daniel, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. It's uh, great to be here. I'm very excited for this. PyTorch has been a, a long time coming on the Mac, so it's uh, very exciting to finally have it here. Can you explain to the folks watching what is happening here? What is this test doing? So the benchmark that we're running is VGG16 on the CIFAR 10 dataset. So a lot of acronyms there, but VGG16 came out in 2015. It's a well-tested computer vision architecture. And CIFAR 10 is a data set of about 60,000 or so images, um, originally in 32 by 32, so height and width, of 10 different classes. So like aeroplane, automobile, and a few other things. Uh, but we've upscaled them to 224 by 224 to make the most of the, the GPU hardware. Gotcha. And what the purpose of the benchmark is to essentially see the faster the better, right? All of the computers are running the same code and ideally, because machine learning is and deep learning is quite experimental, the faster you can run your experiments, the more experiments you can run, the more things you can find out that don't work. Yeah. And then in essence, you can find out what does work. So Daniel, you've been working with PyTorch for a while and you know this is still in beta. How much do you think it'll improve once it's fully released? Yeah, it's still beta software. It's part of the PyTorch nightly package, which means it's like the cutting edge version of PyTorch. So it's not guaranteed to be a stable version. So there might be a few bugs. In fact, one of the releases, it's already been updated. There was a memory leak. So there's already been a performance boost in the new nightly version. However, once it hits a, a stable release, uh, I feel like there will be even more performance improvements. Uh, what that, what they will be, I mean, it's hard to, to guess these things. It will just require a little bit more testing. And testing we shall do. All right, so we both use Macs as a daily drivers, but uh, if it were up to you for doing machine learning projects, would you use a Mac right now, or would you use a dedicated NVIDIA card? So if I had to choose, like of course, uh, the, the better the hardware, the faster your machine, machine learning experiments are going to run. However, I kind of use a, a MacBook Pro every day. I don't always have access to a dedicated NVIDIA card. I do have uh, a dedicated deep learning PC, but if I'm not within access of my deep learning PC, um, having the ability to run experiments on a laptop and utilize the GPU on that is excellent. And you could use Colab and whatnot. However, running locally, you still have a lot of benefits like Git integration, other things and whatnot. So 
For me, my workflow is still gonna to continue to be experiment locally and then scale up to a dedicated graphics card when I need to build bigger models. All right, Daniel, well, thanks for explaining that. By the way, you teach machine learning, right? Yes, you're right, I do teach ML. Uh, all my courses are beginner friendly, so if you've had a year or two's experience already with machine learning, my courses are probably not for you. But if you wanna get started in machine learning and deep learning, I've got a beginner friendly machine learning course, I've got a full-blown TensorFlow course, and coming soon, I've got a full-blown PyTorch course, which you can actually find the materials now at learnpytorch.io the second best place on the internet to learn PyTorch. <laughs> the first best is the documentation. Uh, but all of my other courses are available at mrdburk.com slash mlcourses. All right, I'll be sure to link to that down below in the description. Daniel, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, Alex. This has been great. I'll see you next yeah. time. Cheers. <laughs> so I got the results for the M1 Ultra. It just finished up at 16.44 minutes, just about 17 minutes. That's not bad. I also did just run this on my M1 Max without having all my monitors connected that I usually do. And I got 40 minutes for that one. So the gains made by using M1 Ultra are significant in this case, which is pretty good. But Daniel sent me his results for the M1 Pro and the Nvidia Titan. So let's have a look at that. On his M1 Pro MacBook Pro, Daniel got 50 minutes, just over 50 minutes, which is not significantly more than the M1 Max, not that much more. So there is a big jump between the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, and the M1 Ultra with 64 GPU cores. Now, he also ran this on the dedicated GPU, which is the Titan. And yes, as you might expect, that one resulted in much better performance at seven minutes. So the Nvidia Titan card, which is by itself as expensive as one of the MacBook Pros actually ran it faster, no surprise there. But that shouldn't come as a surprise to us and this test should really focus on the difference of PyTorch between the CPU runs of PyTorch versus the new available GPU runs. And if you take a look at this repository, which I'll also link down below, you will see results for the CPU runs here. For example, the M1 Ultra CPU run actually takes 158 minutes to run as opposed to 16 on the GPU. So there you go. Big improvements in PyTorch and Apple Silicon. Thanks a lot. Daniel and thank you all for showing up. If you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. I will see you next time.